During the worldwide conflict in the late 1930s, governments throughout the world sought funds and supplies for their respective sides. As a great power, Germany employed the Junkers G38 four-engine transport plane as a weapon. This one-of-a-kind airplane, with its blended design and no distinct separating lines, provided passengers with magnificent views from their seats on the wings. During the war, the Junkers G-38 served as a bomber and a transport for the Axis countries and their allies. The plane was a source of pride for Third Reich authorities. Junkers aircraft and motorworks played an important role in the German aviation industry throughout the interwar period. Despite repeated attempts, large-scale commercial transports were destroyed as a result of post-World War II Allied demands and the Treaty of Versailles, which barred Germany from producing aircraft with considerable power or military purposes. Yonkers, on the other hand, persisted, restarting the project as the G-40 transatlantic mail seaplane and producing the G-38 landplane variant. The G-38 was produced with funding from the Reich Air Ministry following the conventional Yonkers approach and incorporating a cockpit in the streamlined bow fuselage. The German planes used a blended wing body design. The G-38 aircraft, designed by Louis de Moche, was a maneuverable and silent technology capable of carrying both cargo and people on its approximately six-foot thick wings. Yonkers engineers used the enormous blended wing to hold a passenger cabin on either side and the whole fuselage provided enough capacity for goods and people while yet being conveniently accessible. The G-38 aircraft had its maiden flight in northern Germany on November 6, 1929 and flew for 45 minutes. The Junkers type was the largest at the time, the product of Bureau's efforts to develop a gigantic passenger aircraft. Because of its size and unique static design, it was possible to install payload chambers in the wings. The first G-38 aircraft, with serial number 3301 and identification D-2000, was acquired by the Reich Air Ministry for demonstration flights in March 1913. The G-38 achieved world records for airplanes howling a hefty 11,025 pound cargo in terms of speed, distance and endurance. After earning international praise, Deutsche Lufthansa AG commercialized the concept. Lufthansa introduced the G-38 between Berlin and London in 1930. With a capacity of up to 13 passengers, the Yonkers model's popularity grew throughout Europe, prompting improvements to extend the passenger compartment. Construction proceeded until mid-1932, when a second deck within the D-2000 fuselage was created. Yonkers yard engineers re-engineered the initial G-38 model on February 2, 1931. With two Yonkers LH and two L88 engines, resulting in a total power rating of 2366 horsepower. The second, G38, was redesigned with a double deck fuselage with seating for 34 people. The second G38 type, dubbed General Field Marshal von Hindenburg, was employed by Lufthansa to cover scheduled routes in European cities such as Berlin, Hanover, Amsterdam and London. These aircraft were a source of pride for the German aviation industry, but their production costs were too expensive, totaling 2.2 million Reichsmarks. The money was recovered by the German government and executives spent thousands of Reichsmarks on the model. Both modified G-38s flew until May 1936, 
when test pilot Bilham Zimmerman wrecked the first model during a windy test flight, causing serious damage. For over a decade, General Field Marshal von Hindenburg and the Lufthansa fleet employed the second G-38, subsequently known as Diapis. During World War II, the Luftwaffe used the surviving Yonkers G-38s for military purposes, undertaking multiple missions in the European theater. Adolf Hitler issued Directive No. 29 for the military administration of Greece on May 17, 1941, outlining comprehensive laws for seized territory, inhabitants and German armed troops. Despite their defeat, the Greeks received ongoing support from the United Kingdom, Australia and New Zealand. On the same day, Royal Air Force bow fighters detected the Luftwaffe as Yonkers G-38, resulting in the terrible end of the second and last variant. Mitsubishi visited Germany in the late 1920s to explore a military version of the German civilian aircraft, the Yonkers G-38. They expressed interest in a military version of the German civilian aircraft known as KI-51 and came to a deal for licensing and production. To assist Mitsubishi, a team of Yonkers engineers and troops was dispatched to Japan. In 1931, test pilot Zimmerman, who piloted the G-38, successfully flew a prototype. The first two Mitsubishi Ki-20 variants were constructed in 1932, and four additional Ki-20s were manufactured until 1935, employing Japanese components that differed somewhat from their original German equivalents. During World War II, the Japanese Air Force planned to use the Ki-20 as a transport and support aircraft, as well as a bomber. The models were equipped with six gun stations and a large 11,020-pound maximum bomb load. The major aim after joining the Imperial Japanese Army Air Force was to strike forts in Manila Bay, Philippines and invade Siberia. Despite engine advancements, Japan and Germany's presence and combined collaboration before to the Tripartite Pact were kept secret resulting in the out-of-sequence numbering of aircraft until 1940. Hugo Yonkers had a fantasy of developing a flying wing aircraft with a capacity of 500 passengers, but after much investigation, he realized it was not practicable. As the G-38's huge blended wings hampered its speed, he recognized the need for streamlined aircraft with a wide body and narrow wings. NASA and Boeing eventually accepted Yonkers blended wings technology as an alternative to traditional tube and wing airplane layouts. Despite not being designed as a military aircraft, Yonkers G-38 technology had a significant impact on World War II warfare. Thank you for watching my video. To watch more video like these, consider subscribing and you may also find more German aircraft videos on this channel.